or you will be dismissed for Sunday school right after announcements, so sit tight until then. That's all for housekeeping for today. We're so grateful that you've chosen to spend your time with us this morning. Let's head into worship, and I'll see you in a bit. Sing this together, church will come. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, Let's see his hands. We've come to adore our Lord. Amen.
giving thanks when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was he said love the Lord your God with all of your heart all of your soul and all of your mind and this song really is just an expression of that it's just a, a way to be able to put into music the love from our heart to God why don't you just take and, and, and sing that song to him or say what you need to say to God just take a few moments in the sweet stillness of his presence and just love on him Father, would you receive our praise today? Lord, it's, it's, it's given, it's not manufactured, it's not coerced. It's just out of our hearts, just saying, God, we just love you. Thank you for teaching us what real love looks like. We all come from different experiences, different environments, different backgrounds, different families, and uh, none of us has been loved as completely as you love us. God, today I pray that you would help us to understand that, not at an intellectual level, but at a heart level. That it would literally change the way we love other people. That you would consume us so much with your love that, God, it can't help but bleed out to those that are around us. We have been so blessed, so favored by the presence of God in our lives. And we are loved unconditionally it doesn't matter what we've done, who we are, where we've come from. You love us unconditionally, and God, we're grateful for that today. 
so we sing this song that just says we love you back. We love you back. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your abiding presence that's in this place. You don't reside in a building. You reside in hearts. And each time we gather together as the church, we want to lift up your name. We want to honor you. And so thank you for what you were up to today hearts and lives of people. Transform us for your glory and for your honor, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Why don't you take a moment and welcome one another uh, this morning and uh, just find somebody you haven't seen before and say hi. God bless you. to another edition of CLC News. I'm your anchor, Tony Toronto, bringing you the latest stories. Our first story this week, Christmas hampers. Thank you everyone who contributed to our Christmas hampers this year through your donations and volunteering. So many families in our community have been blessed this holiday season because of them. Thank you to Treat and team for organizing the event. Now, through the wonderful world of technology, I'm able to see the congregation from my new studio. Great to see some of you wearing ugly sweaters just like myself. Looking good, loving it, loving it, yes. I'm just joking, there's no technology. I don't know what you're wearing. I'm hoping that somebody in your congregation is actually wearing a sweater or else I'm gonna look silly. And now let's get the news on the street with our very own reporter slash weatherman. As everyone at the station wears multiple hats because we're running on a skeleton crew, Denny Durham. Denny, can you hear me? Denny! <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Hi, I can hear you. Before talking about the latest scoop, I'm going to give you a brief weather report. It's cold! Okay, now for the talk on the street. Our annual youth retreat is back. This coming February 9th to 11th, 2024, the junior high and senior high students are going on a three-day, two-night retreat in Huntsville, Ontario. Retreats are a great way for students to focus on God's presence, to allow the power of Jesus to affect their lives. This weekend will be filled with important conversations, incredible activities, and unforgettable memories. It's a time you won't want to miss. This year's theme is Stories, where we'll explore how God's story impacts the one that we're living today. The early bird rate for the retreat is $225, which includes all the students' accommodations, transportation, meals, and activities. But today is December 17th, and it's the last day for the early bird rate. There are payment plans and subsidies available for those who need them. If you're interested in signing up or know somebody who might be, you can head over to our website and sign up through our event registration link. If you have any questions, please find Pastor Caden or email him at caden at christianlifecenter.ca. We cannot wait to see how lives are impacted at this retreat. That's all from the streets. Back to you, Tony. Thank you, Danny. Keep in mind, next Sunday is Christmas Eve. Please join us for a regular service at 10 a.m. and our candlelight Christmas Eve service at 6 p.m. Finally, remember to download our CLC app if you're visiting and click on me or fill out our connection card so we can send you a little thank you for joining us today. And if you've been with CLC for a while and are ready to give your regular tithes and offering or want to contribute to all that's going on at CLC, we encourage you to text the word GIVE to 1-888-364-GIVE-4483. Send an email money transfer to life at christianlifecenter.ca. Use your debit machines in the lobby or drop off an envelope at the Welcome Center desk or mailbox outside or scan this QR code. That's all for this week's announcements from all of us here at CLC News. Enjoy the rest of the service. Well, good morning, church. I'm not preaching, but I have been asked on behalf of the board to say a few things. And uh, can I just say, first of all, uh, last Sunday we announced that uh, we're encouraging you as a congregation to bring cards, uh, farewell uh, for Pastor Sam and Sue, and uh, any any love offering that you want to give to them. There's a box out there in the in the lobby. And Gary and Carmel Thompson are looking at that, so I encourage you to uh, do that before the service or before the day is finished. Before we um, go any further, uh, 13 years is a long time, 
and a lot happens in 13 years. And so we have put together a uh, picture slide of some of the things that have happened. So before we go any further, I, I haven't seen this myself, but uh, we're looking forward to just watching some of the pictures that uh, are going to happen. Thank you. Welcome, dear friends and members of CLC to this special celebration as we bid farewell to our beloved pastor, Sam Sibley. Today, we gather not just to say goodbye, but to celebrate the incredible journey of faith we've shared together. As we look back on these cherished memories, we see the impact Pastor Sam has had on our lives and the growth of our faith community. Through countless moments of challenge and adversity, he fearlessly placed himself on the front lines, risking life and limb for the sake of our cherished church. In the face of trials and tribulations, he stands as a pillar of calm and resilience. In times of joy and sorrow, Pastor Sam stood by our side, offering comfort, support, and a shining example of unwavering faith. Let us take a moment to reflect on the transformative journey we've experienced together. On behalf of Christian Life Center, we express our deepest gratitude to Pastor Sam Sibley for his dedicated service, leadership, and unwavering commitment to our spiritual growth. CLC is a great place to worship. Thank you, Pastor Sam. We will miss you. Great pictures, great memories. Amen. So I'm going to invite the members of the board to join me here on the platform. I'm going to get you to stand over here. And Pastor Sam and Sue, Megan, Raph, and Cam, I'm going to invite you to come and uh, just to stand over here for a few moments. <clears throat> So I, I've asked, um, or the members of the board have asked me that I would really be the spokesperson for this part of it. And I just uh, jotted down a few things that I want to say to you. Pastor Sam, when you called a quick uh, meeting with the board just over a month ago without giving us an agenda, I had a feeling that it would be to give us a letter of resignation, and sure enough, that happened. Throughout scripture, we can see where God had a plan and he needed someone to carry, that, uh, carry out that plan. His plan was to deliver the children of Israel out of 400 years of slavery in Egypt and he chose Moses. His plan was to lead them into the promised land and he chose Joshua. He had a plan to save the Jews from the genocide and he chose Queen Esther. His plan was to send his own son into our world to be our savior and he chose Mary. His plan was to fill a vital position of a regional director in Western Ontario, and he chose you, Pastor Sam. He has a plan to further the work that you are leaving here at CLC, and I'm confident he has already placed his hand on someone to take up the challenge. And because we don't know who that person is, it's our duty as a congregation to pray and to seek God until we know in our heart that God has given to us a, a, a new pastor for this congregation. I've always said there's never a convenient time to leave, but it's, there's always a right time. 
and I, I've used that, it's, that phrase many times, convenience is always something in the works, but the right time is when we know it's in our heart to do that. You told me last week that this is the longest that you've ever served in a church. 13 years speaks well of your leadership and respect for and by the people of this congregation. Anyone who came to faith in Christ under your ministry will always remember you as their first pastor. And they will hold you in high honor the rest of their lives. You have led well. The church has grown. It is financially healthy. And you initiated some major renovations to a building that is showing its age. And by the way, when you saw Pastor Sam with the sledgehammer, that was the start of the renovations in the lobby. The church, we want to honor all of you. Sue as First Lady of CLC. <laughs> you have been a stable support for Sam, your family, as well as the CLC family. Megan and Cam, you came as teenagers and now you're leaving as adults. Megan, or sorry, Raphael, you found your wife here at CLC. We've encouraged the congregation to show their appreciation with cards and gifts, which you will get to take home and read this afternoon. So on behalf of the staff and board, we want to likewise show our appreciation to you. So I'm going to invite, first of all, uh, Pastor Caden, right here, okay? I, I, I want to invite the staff as well. I meant to say I include the staff, okay? So Pastor Caden, I'm going to ask you to make a pre presentation to Pastor Sam. Yeah, so uh, I, I have glasses over there for when I cry. I left them down there, though, um, if I cry. Um, first, uh, Sue, um, I just want to say to you, uh, as the first lady of CLC. Um, <laughs> I know she does. Yeah, yeah, she's like passing away inside right now. Um, thank you so much for being yourself. Um, I know for me, a 21-year-old coming in, uh, I was so racked with where do I find the middle between, my, middle between myself and being a pastor? And uh, you are yourself. And it brought all my guard down because I was like, if Sue can do it, I can do it too. Um, and <laughs> I don't know if you've met Sue or actually been able to have a conversation with her, but she's the definition of hospitable and welcoming. Um, I've actually never met anyone more hospitable than you. One of my profs in Bible college always said the phrase um, that hospitality is the embodiment of the gospel. And so it's the gospel in action. And so I found myself all the time, whether it was through a rough week, an easy week, coming to church and being met by a hospitable Sue and seeing Jesus in that. And uh, I, th I wanna thank you for that because it helped me get through uh, tough times, easy times, whatever it is. And so I just wanna let you know that you've been uh, a minister in my life, that you've spoken and you've encouraged me even through a small, how you actually doing, Caden? And uh, I can't avoid those. And so thank you so much, uh, Sue. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Sam, big kahuna, um, much to be said. Um, when I left Bible college in fourth year, your last year, what they tell you so uh, like passionately with almost aggression <laughs> is your first boss is in extremely important because this is the person that's going to shape the way you do ministry, the way you see ministry, uh, who you are. Um, there's moments, I've already had friends who have had rough moments, and so there's mo they say, hey, your first boss is crucial. And I'm so proud that after a year and a half, I get to stand here and say that I was blessed with a phenomenal first boss. Um, uh, we've spent hours sitting around your round table in your office, whether it be uh, a staff meeting, a mentorship meeting, uh, or just having fun or whatever it is. Um, but I can confidently say that every time I left that room, I never felt discouraged. I only felt seen and encouraged by you. Um, 
And so thank you for that because uh, you might be sitting there thinking, well, that's what a pastor should do. Lead pastors should be investing in their staff. And I know so many lead pastors who don't, um, who just see people as task doers or a way to get to their vision. But Pastor Sam, you made it intentional to pour into me as a young man, as a young pastor, as a young leader. Um, and so you've made an investment in me that is, uh, I can't even put words to because it'll be things that I continue to live and uh, see the results of your fruit on my tree in years to come. And so I thank you for that. Uh, I can't see my notes. Uh, I wanna thank you for providing immense space for me to be myself, to be silly, to be goofy, to, uh, to be anxious, to be scared, and providing space for that as I've grown, as I've learned what ministry looks like and uh, just being a follower of Christ looks like. And so uh, I can confidently stand here today saying that I have a 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 relationship with you where Paul says, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And I can honestly say today that I want to imitate your heart for God. Um, I saw you come in at 8 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. almost every morning so that you could get an hour of quiet time to pray and to read the word. Um, th those are things that aren't taught, they're caught. And I've caught those things, and I, th I wanna thank you for that because it's pushed me to be better, pushed me towards uh, God's presence, and so I thank you. Uh, I've rarely seen such passion and wisdom in pursuit of the Lord. Uh, so I thank you that it wasn't just, hey, Caden, this is what a pastor does, but it was, what does a follower of Christ look like? And you are a follower of Christ. And so thank you for pointing me closer to God. And I don't just speak for myself, but I speak for all these people when I say that you've pointed us towards God. I look up to you um, in the way that you're a husband, that you're a father. Those are things that I look to imitate when I reach those stages later on in my life. And so uh, just in everything that you do, I just wanna say thank you for being, it, uh, being an example in those things and doing it unto God because that is what's encouraging. And so um, I just wanna say thank you so much for that. Um, and so I'll just end with this. Um, and I, you know I'm an intentional guy. I don't just say things to say things. And so um, I... A lot of people throw around the word honor, but it has genuinely been an honor to work a year and a half with you. Um, I look forward to when I get to the end of my life um, and I can look back and say that I got to do a year and a half with Pastor Sam Sibley, um, a friend, a mentor, a boss, a saint. Um, so thank you that I was able to be a part of your life even for just uh, 18 months. And so thank you for seeing the best in me, for calling the best in me, challenging me, pushing me. Uh, and I'm better for knowing you. Thank you so much. Yeah, this for you. So I'm going to invite Pastor Summer to come, and she's going to make a presentation to Sue and to Megan. Uh, Pastor Summer, there's one thing you have to do here. Did you want to? Did you want to say anything? I like was whispering things to them. So, um, no, I just want to say thank you to both of you guys. Um, I think the last six, seven months that I've been here have been um, a lot of of change for me, and a lot of learning and growing and. Like Caden said already, Sue on Sundays would come up to me and be like, so, how's it actually going? And I'd be like, <laughs> um, but it always just made me feel uh, heard and seen. And same with Pastor Sam, just, I can walk into the office and he's like, are you okay? Are you good? Is everything okay? But we'd have those, those, those moments to chat and you created space and created an environment for that. And... Um, I haven't always had that in the past, and so I really appreciate just the fact that you guys created space for me to be myself and to be seen and known and heard. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm going to invite Pastor Dave to come and to, first of all, make a presentation to Megan and Ralph and to Cam. I could not let this moment go by. I was only asked to pray, but I asked for one minute to say something, Pastor Caden. <laughs> Pastor Sam and Sue came into our lives, and they brought along with them Megan and Cam. They came and they've left their DNA with us from the start. He led us through many aspects of building renovations, as you can see. Pastor Sam, thank you for your vision, for your church planting commitment, and your commitment to missions. Thank you for your servant leadership and for your dedication to our spiritual growth. Thank you for your source of strength and inspiration. You've nurtured our faith, enriched our lives, You've been a great, you will be greatly missed. You have navigated challenges of anti-black racism and a global pandemic. You have lovingly embraced over 90 different cultural representation in CLC and created a safe space for us to worship and have healthy life together. For that, we say thank you. We did not always get things right or perfect, but your faithfulness was consistent. You made yourself available to listen, to guide, and your door was always open for us to have faithful and open and honest conversations. Pastor Sam, thank you for guiding, teaching, and loving us through faithful ministry in the Word of God and your faithfulness to him. For that and for more, we appreciate and we say thank you. Now, my real reason for being up here was to pray for them. So I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads and stand. Okay, please, please stand with us. <laughs> Lift your hands towards them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Pastor Sam, Sue, Megan, and Cam, their impressionable impact on our lives. We come with a heart of gratitude and mixed emotions today. We ask for your comfort and for your surrounding love and for your unwavering commitment to them to be steadfast. Father, surround them with your comfort Father, we ask that you will just allow your peace to be upon them. We pray that you will, they will find joy and fulfillment in the next chapter of their lives. We ask for your blessings to overflow them in their ministry. Father, pour out your faithfulness and your love upon them. Father, we ask for a double portion of your anointing and your blessings on their lives. Father, guide them through the challenges to come in the next season. Father, may their impact here be the impact in the next season with other lives and other people. Father, we ask that you may guide them through the challenges. Father, we ask as they bid farewell that your blessings and your peace will go upon them and they may be enriched by your promises and your comforting words. Father, increase their faith. Give them patience. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, for your promises and your peace. Father, we thank you of how they've impacted our lives time and time again. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus and through the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you'll walk with them. We pray that your word will be a lamp unto their feet and a light to their path in the next chapter, in the next journey. So, Father, we give you thanks and we lift our hands with grateful hearts to say thank you, Jesus, 
for you have demonstrated your faithfulness to us through them. And they have modeled you amongst us. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we go with them. Cover them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> so just before we turn the mic over to Pastor Sam. I really was trying to think of how we could say goodbye, so we thought we would put it to music. So Rebecca, can we just play a clip here? So long, farewell, I'm All right. <laughs> Thank you. So Pastor Sam, you have the last word. All right. So we thank you, board members and staff, and I turn it over to Sam. I'm actually going to give uh, the second last word to my wife. Thank you. We look so young in some of those pictures, and hun, you had so much hair. <laughs> okay, I've written uh, my speech, and I'm not going to rush through it, if that's okay. So the thought of the day is, tears are fine. So I'm going to go with that. I'd first like to thank and honor our children. <laughs> Megan and Cam, in many ways you have grown up here. You've both given a lot here. It was never an expectation from us for you to volunteer, but you chose to do so in so many areas. You both have big hearts and serving has been a huge part of that. You've only ever had your dad as your pastor. This will be a big life change for you as well even though you're grown adults. But know this, two things will never change. The pride we feel as your parents and the unconditional love we have for you. Pastor Dave, Pastor Caden, Pastor Summer, Donnie, there he is, Leslie and Carla, you are colleagues, but you are also friends. You are committed, strong, faithful, loyal, and operate with integrity. You love to laugh, which I love, <laughs> and have a skip in your step. Continue to live out the calling God has on your lives. He has amazing plans for each of you. So memories. There's so many to think and ponder over 13 years. So bear with me. I've gone back with a few. Some are more recent, but here we go. Every Christmas, until our kids were college age, probably well into college, Joy and Dexter would give our kids an Oshawa Center gift card, making them feel thought of and cared for. But not only that, for every special occasion, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and any others that I've missed, Joy would uh, have a handwritten card delivered to our house just to say that she was thinking of us. Sitting in Annette's living room with Linda, Rose, and Marjorie in the early days, planning out women's activities, and years later, with another group of ladies led by Lapuan, with Shanaz, Andrea, 
Lisa, and Kara. The first week we were here, my friend Abby, where is she? There she is. Asked if I would like to go for coffee. So I said yes. And we have been going for coffee ever since and making our mark on many restaurants, coffee shops, ice cream parlors, <laughs> parks, gyms, yes, gyms, <laughs> in the Durham region and beyond. Abby, you're now a lifelong friend. I sat, I sat in the same seat for years in, in our earlier time here, every Sunday, and I sat with Vera and Cecil. Vera, you're still in the same row, and that's where I sat for many years with you. And now Cecil isn't here, but I have those memories. Many summers, I enjoyed helping at vacation day camp, but I've got to tell you, I did have a secret desire to be a Pop-Tart. <laughs> but unfortunately, no calls came my way. <laughs> we had thought of doing a senior Pop-Tart, but we didn't want to scare everyone off. <laughs> oh, Working in the coffee corner out here, handing out coffee and hot chocolate, usually with Camille, spreading kindness and getting to know her at the same time. Driving Megan to youth in the early days and then heading over to chapters to put into some time until she was done. Getting to know the area, you know, shopping and uh, just checking things out. Cameron bringing his grade eight friends to junior highs on Tuesday evenings enjoying the amazing Christmas concerts put on by Pastor Maria and the fun on the wagon rides with Farmer Bob laughing and singing. Serving our community at Family Fun Day, then it was Project Give Back, and then the Big Give. Is Donna here today? Donna? Oh, they're sighed. Dancing with my partner, Donna, at all the weddings we've attended over the years. So Donna, our next one is May 2024. Whoa. Taking part in the many marriage retreats, two of which were overnight sessions at Elam Lodge, where we got to sit around the campfire in the evenings, laughing and telling stories, while roasting hot dogs and marshmallows, and listening to Mark's jokes. <laughs> Helping in the food bank with Leslie and many others. I must say that the first time I did this, it really made an impact on me. And I was very humbled. And I, I often tried to add more food in the bags than I was supposed to. But if you haven't helped in that area, it, is, it, it truly is life-changing. You will be blessed as you bless other people. I actually became a techie while I was here, <laughs> being on the computer uh, in the back to bring live stream to those who weren't in-house and had some fun conversations with Rob, who was on the camera as always, uh, and uh, Marvin and Sharan as well. Helping junior high Sunday school as recent as last Sunday, when we, where we had the privilege to write Christmas cards to seniors who live in the nursing home. I love junior high age and have been blessed over the years helping in this area. Karaoke night at Rex and Eileen's. Are they here? Where I was able to debut my less than stellar singing skills. <laughs> and last, last memory, there's so many more, but at my dad's funeral in Barrie, Ontario three months ago, in the door of the church walks Sharon and Key, Dexter, Annette, Leslie, and Carol. They didn't know my dad, but they were there for me. And I really appreciated that. Thank you. Another big part of my life here since 2011 has been to work at our community college, Durham College, as a nurse technologist, 
working predominantly with students from ages 18 to 24 of our community. Imagine having the privilege to work daily with the youth of our community. Wow, awesome. I have considered it an honor and will continue my tenure there in the coming months. So I say all this to say, this is the crux of what I wanted to say. Thank you for caring for our family. Thank you for being gracious and kind. Thank you for the care and attention that you've shown to our children. Thank you for asking how we are doing and showing concern at the challenging times and moments that we have faced. Thank you for your support, for having our backs. We know we are far from perfect, but have learned and grown through the years as we have encouraged each of you to do. I leave you with a verse that's been very dear to me this fall. It's the latter portion of Psalm 73, verse 26. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Whatever I may face, he is my refuge. He is my rock, and he is my surety. He is my portion. He is enough for each day. He's sufficient for what I may face, for what's coming. He is my, my source of security, and he is my hope. And I just pray that for each of you, that will, you will know God is your hope, but you will also know that uh, God never leaves, and thankfully, he never changes. Good to see so many of you out here today. I felt I ought to resign more often, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Um, I'm not sure truly who you were talking about earlier, those of you that did talk, but uh, so thank you. Um, we certainly don't feel worthy of that honor. It has been such an amazing time uh, with you. There is no doubt that uh, you, the congregation has changed over the years and some of you have left, some of you have come. And we're just grateful. We're grateful for every relationship that we've been able to connect with. Uh, some of you, we've never met. You've been going here for 20 years and that's okay, but we're glad that you're here and uh, glad that we've had a chance to invest in you and you in us. Uh, like Sue, I threw down a few words. Um, Great job, great memories. I mean, there's just so much. How do you compress 13 years into five minutes, right? It doesn't, you can't do that. And so, you know, as we are, we have lots of memories and are very thankful for them, and hopefully you have the same thing. I mean, we've done missions trips together and work bees together, and we've hung out together. There's just been so much, and uh, so grateful for that. Well, these will be my last words to you as, uh, as your pastor. You know, as pastors, we are called to serve, and I, there are many days I wake up and I say, man, I'm not, I'm not worthy uh, to serve this great church, but since day one, I have really been committed to serving you because I truly think that a person isn't worthy to lead until they first learn to serve. And so, it's been an honor. Thank you. We have really, truly always tried to, to give you our very best. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is from a guy named J. Robert Clinton, and he says, the amazing thing is that God is working in the leader first and then through the leader, that a person ministers out of who they are. And so, because I believe in that quote, uh, we have always tried to give you our very best because we knew that as we grew, you would grow. As we learn, you would learn because we're ministering out of who we are. We truly wanted the very best for you and so we strive certainly to grow and be better uh, each day, both personally and, and certainly spiritually. How many of you were here my very first Sunday? Raise your hand for me. Lots of you. Well, thanks for sticking with us for 13 years. <laughs> thanks for not leaving. My first Sunday, uh, you'll remember this, I intentionally wore jeans and a, and a jacket. You remember that? 
you do. I did it on purpose, and some of you were a little freaked out because you were used to dressing up a lot for church. But I wanted to convey the message that it's not what I wear that matters, it's who I am. That's what really matters. My character, my heart, my integrity, my love, that's what matters. And so, on this last Sunday with you, I intentionally wore jeans and a jacket again. I want to let you know that I haven't changed, that I'm still the same guy that I was 13 years ago, but with a few upgrades. <laughs> By the grace of God, hopefully I'm a little more refined, a little older, a little wiser, and a lot less hair. <laughs> that is because of you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What I'm thankful for is that you didn't try to put me into a box. What I'm thankful for is that you let me be me. And I have no doubt that I was probably not exactly what you were expecting. Certainly not what you were used to, but you allowed me to be myself, and I am forever grateful for that. We have truly tried to love and care for you for 13 years. And subsequently, you have loved and cared for us during that same time. You've welcomed us into your tribe like family. You have taught us about yourselves. You have taught us about the cultures that you come from. You've allowed us to share the stories of your life, to share your grief, to share your joys and your pain. And again, we are eternally grateful for that because I think that's exactly what a church should be. The tagline of our church says that we are discovering life together. Not just the good things, but everything. I think one of the strengths of this church, and I would encourage you to keep it up, is your friendliness, your warmness, your openness to new people. Galatians uh, 6 9 says, don't be weary in well-doing, and I would encourage you to never stop being like that. It's who you are. It's part of your DNA. It's part of the, the culture and the ethos that you've created here. We as a church, we've, we've laughed together, we've cried together, we've learned together. We've certainly made mistakes together, uh, and yet through it all, we have, I hope, grown more like Christ together. And that's ultimately my, my biggest passion for you, is that you would grow to be like Christ every day. Some of you, as we already noted, have been here since I first came, and others are new to CLC. And if you are new to CLC, I want you to understand this. And if you're just kind of, maybe you're the kind of person that's not new, but you dabble once in a while, right? Can I just tell you this? This is a fantastic church to be a part of. It is a good church. It's a safe church. It's the kind of church where you can bring your entire family to and know that everybody's going to learn about Jesus, that you're going to experience community, that you're going to be challenged and changed and encouraged to become the best Christian that you can be, to be all that God has designed and bested, you've destined you to be. It is a church that I have loved being the pastor of, and I mean that sincerely. I've loved it. And though, you know, we've had lots of ups and, and a few downs together over the years, I have loved getting to know you. You as a church have been incredibly supportive. You have been incredible. You've been caring and loving. And I truly appreciate the investment that you have made both in me and in my family. I do want to just take a second and in particular thank three gentlemen who have become confidants and allies and friends over the years. Now, many of you have been very closely connected to me, to me uh, but these three have just been so special. Uh, Dexter Higgins, Dane Lawrence, and Dave McCarthy. And I am very grateful for each of you men and the investment you have made. Please, please. I'm not saying that I'm not grateful for the rest of you. I obviously am. But these three guys, man to man, have made an investment in me. We have, we have done a lot together. We've experienced a lot together over the years. And I am certainly proud to call each of them friends. <clears throat> I want to challenge you as a church to continue to find your greatest God-given potential. 
you know, and that maybe, you know, you might say, well, that's the, the pastor's job to lead us where we want to go. But each of you come in each week either ready to hear from God or not. Maybe you're just warming a seat. Maybe you're ready to hear from God. And, and I just I need to challenge you not to sit back and, and wallow in mediocrity, but to strive for God-sized dreams, both in your personal life and corporately together. Continue to reach out to your community and never forget that passion. I think it's, it's part of the heartbeat of God and it's going to ensure the continuity of this church on into the future. Never stop giving of your time and your talents and your ties. Uh, Keith mentioned it earlier, this church is healthy financially and, and, and healthy, you know, membership-wise. It's just, so, it's just such a, a great place to be. And I want to challenge you to make sure that you find your unique place in this church. Find your unique expression in this church. You know, Galatians 5.13 challenges us to serve one another in love. And if there's nothing else that you can do, find somebody that you can just love on in this church. I want to say thank you to you for your words of gratitude and love and congratulations. You have been so gracious as we have announced, you know, our, our resignation. Um, you've been so gracious to us. It has, again, been a pleasure over 13 years. been an honor to know you and discover life together with you. And we will miss, truly, the weekly interaction uh, that we have with you. My final challenge is just to continue to serve and love God faithfully and serve and love people faithfully, including people in this church and the people outside in the community. When you do that, I think what, what happens is you do a couple things. You, you certainly honor the legacy that I've tried to leave here, but more importantly, you honor the heartbeat of God when you serve and love him and others faithfully. And I do believe he's gonna bless you and honor you for that. I want to ask you two things uh, in closing. First, I want to ask that you would extend to your new pastor, whenever he or she comes, that you would extend to them the same grace and care and love that you've extended to me and my family. That's up to you. But I do know this. They will be God's person for this church, for this next season that CLC is going through. It might be easy for some of you to compare them to me, both positively or negatively, but please don't. They are going to be better than me in some ways, and uh, hopefully I might have been better than them in some ways, but please, cut them some slack. Allow them to be themselves as you have allowed me to be, and allow them to flourish in the skills and the giftings that God has given to them. You see, it's God who aligns leaders in churches. You might think that you're in control, but God has an incredible way of doing what he needs to do in order to bring about a brand new season, and, uh, and I just encourage you to... Give them a chance to be all that God has designed them to be. Let them be themselves and enjoy watching what God is doing through them as they are faithful to God. And the second thing is, please pray for your board. Because your board is tasked with the responsibility of conducting the very important business of finding the next lead pastor. And they need wisdom, and they need favor, and they just need your prayers as they do that. Thankfully, they are great people. And you've seen them up here today. They are great people. They love God dearly. They love this church dearly. And they're assisted by a district superintendent, Jason Luscombe, who's a great friend of mine, and he's a godly man. And together, I know that your godly board and your godly superintendent, they are going to work together to present to you the right name. And I would just ask that you would continue to pray for them uh, as they work through that process. We are going to miss you, we love you, and we are very grateful for the last 13 years together with you. God bless. Okay, we're going to close now, and I'm just going to pray, and we're going to go downstairs to the gym and have a time to share, and maybe a few words you can encourage him and say to him. I would ask you, please only take like two minutes, because I know there's going to be a long line, but we just want to say, Pastor Sam, we're going to miss you. We love you dearly. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for this day, O oh God. Father, I want to thank you for Pastor Sam and his family, O oh God, as they move on into their next chapter, O oh God. Father, I pray blessings on them, O oh God. Father, I ask you for your protection over their lives, O oh God. Father, even as Pastor Sam will be traveling back and forth. Father, I pray a blessing over him and his family. Father, bless what we're going to partake of downstairs. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed downstairs to the gym. So, Pastor Sam, please try and head on down to the gym. Well, CLC, that's it for today. Thank you for spending time and worshiping with us this morning. And if you have any questions about today's sermon, or better yet, if you're ready to give your heart to the Lord, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 905-686-1411 or email at life at christianlifecenter.ca to let us know that we can help you on your next step in your faith journey. Remember to stay in touch with us throughout the week by following us online by searching for at Discover CLC. And until next time, CLC family, enjoy your week. Be blessed.